Hey guys, it's Lindsay, and I've flown almost 100,000 miles this year, and it's June. I wanted to make a video for you guys to help get you through the airport on the plane comfortable and cozy when you're traveling on either short or long trips. So here are my top 10 flight tips. Tip one, pack carry-on only. If you guys have seen my packing video, great. And if you haven't, I recommend you checking it out. The link is in my description. But I would say no matter how long you're gonna be gone, no matter how far you are going, you should always, always, always aim to pack carry-on only. Not only does this make check-in easier, you don't have to wait in a bag drop line, but also if anything goes wrong with your flight, if you are delayed, if you miss a connection, if anything happens, you will be way more easily rerouted on another flight if you don't have luggage. An example of this is I was going to Hawaii with one of my coworkers for a shoot, and we were gonna get there a day earlier so we could scout and we could get a little bit of sunshine in, but our flight from Los Angeles to Hawaii had gotten super delayed, and they were going to put us on a different flight, but because because I had carry-on only, she had checked bags, they were not able to do it. They just made us sit there and wait for the four hours and miss out on that Hawaii time. So this will not happen every single time, it won't save you every time there's a flight delayed, but when it does, it will totally be worth it. Two, know where your liquids are and how many bins you need before you get up to security. The easiest way to do that is to have them in a clear bag, which means you can just unzip your carry-on, you can pull it out, you can put it in a tray, and it will go through. The max you can ever have is three ounces. So I have like these little ones that I had bought, it says facial cleanser, and I just like re-up it whenever I need to. Also, laptops need to be in a separate bin. So before you get up there, if you know that you have a laptop in your bag, pull two bins because you will not be able to put your toiletries with your laptop in the same bin. Do the math in your head beforehand so you're not fumbling with bins holding up the line. Number three, wear comfy clothes, do not wear shorts, dresses, or skirts. Now, this is going to be a point of contention, but I do not know why people dress up for flights. I get it, if you wanna wear jeans and a t-shirt, it's fine. I take it to the extreme, I wear sweats. Super generic, it's not sloppy, but it's definitely not gonna win me any fashion awards. If you are dressing up because you have an event afterwards, I would recommend not wearing those clothes and having them in your carry-on and then changing into them uh, before you land because sitting the entire time, they're going to get wrinkled. They're not gonna look very good. I fly to Tampa a lot because we do a lot of filming there and I am constantly seeing people get on the planes in tank tops and Sophie shorts and then freezing their butt off for the entire flight back to Los Angeles because it gets cold. It gets really cold and even if you're able to sweet talk the flight attendant into giving you a blanket, it, it does not save everything. It does not help. Pants, yes. Four, bring sleep aids, neck pillow, eye mask, headphones, and melatonin or Tylenol PM. The best, most practical neck pillow that I found, I've made an entire video about it and the rest of it I just keep right in here. Sometimes I have melatonin, sometimes I have Tylenol PM, it's Tylenol PM this time, and I just keep this. It's always just in my bag. I never have to think about it. I can just totally forget about it, and I know that I have it at all times. So even if you're not on an overnight flight, I recommend keeping that in your bag because you might just want to take a nap. Number five, drink water, don't drink soda, don't drink booze. I know, also, pro tip, bring your own tea. This is self-explanatory, and I know you've heard that alcohol hits you harder in the air, and it's completely true, so just avoid it. Don't think that soda is a good choice either, because flying is already rough on your body. You've changed altitude, you're in a pressurized cabin, and your body is constantly trying to recalibrate as you're up in the air. Throwing soda and crap sugar in your body at that time is just not a very good choice. If you like tea, herbal teas, green teas, bring your own. Airline companies typically do not have a variety. They normally have like chamomile or black, and those are your two choices. So I I bring my own green tea and I drink that on the plane. Please avoid the booze and soda. And you guys know I love my booze and soda. So the only reason I'm telling you that is because you were in a foreign environment and you gotta be nice to your body while you're up there. Speaking of being nice to your body, number six, bring healthy snacks. I know one of the perks of a long haul flight is the fact that they actually feed you, but even if you were served a meal on that transatlantic flight, I recommend turning it down. Yeah, I know, turning down free food. That stuff is loaded with sodium and it's going to make you feel heavy and bloated for the rest of your time on that plane. When I travel long haul, whether I'm going to England or India, I typically order the vegetarian or vegan meal and I usually end up declining it or eating very little of it, just the fresh parts anyway. I recommend bringing things from home, whether it's string cheese, apples, almonds, protein bars, but just bring your own food and eat that. Seven, keep everything together. 
If you leave something on the plane, there is a 99.999% chance that you are never going to see it again. And I should know because I just left a very expensive mouth guard on the plane. I grabbed my teeth at night, so I had it, and it was in like a bandana thing. And I was like, oh, I'm just not, I'm done napping, so I'm gonna put it on top of my carry-on, and then I'll remember. And I forgot that it was there, and then it fell onto the ground, and I never saw it again. So if you are traveling, no matter what, anytime you are not physically using something, it needs to be where it belongs. You never put anything in the seat back pocket, never put anything on your chair, never put anything on your feet next to you, unless it's your shoes, because you're not gonna get anywhere without your shoes, because as soon as the cleaning crew hits the plane, it's gone. Is gone. Number eight, plan your entertainment. You need to have ideas of what you're gonna do on that plane. Usually if it's a long flight, there will be in-flight entertainment. Make sure you have your earbuds so you can participate. And if there's work that you need to get done, if there's things that you wanna do, make sure it's all in your smaller carry-on bag so you're able to pull it out. You'll have all the chargers that you need. Whatever you want, it is like, Flying is that downtime that you finally get. Think about what you wanna do, the movies you wanna watch, the work you wanna catch up on, the sleep that you are going to have, and plan accordingly. Number nine, give yourself more than enough time. It's Murphy's Law that what can go wrong will go wrong, and if on the other end of that is an international flight, that is a very stress-inducing situation. So if you need to be at the airport, say 4 p.m., so you're there in time to get through security and then get to the boarding in time, make it like 3.30 or 3.15. Worst comes to worst, if you're there too early, you can grab a coffee or just read your book. And if the security line's insane or if you have an issue at security or if anything is going on, at all. You have some padding to make it work. Another good thing to keep in mind is not making plans directly after you land. A lot of times there are delays and if you're supposed to get in at 4 p.m., a really good way to get your plane delayed is to make dinner plans at 6 p.m. because the gods have been tempted and it will happen. So don't tempt fate that way. And number 10, something that I more recently got that I have no idea why I didn't get way before is global entry. If you're going to be flying domestically at all more than once over the next five years and if you're going to be flying internationally even once, this is completely worth it. Now, if you don't know what global entry is, I'm going to break down kind of some quick options right now. There's TSA pre, global entry, and clear. I'm gonna leave clear out of there because I don't even understand what that is. Uh, if you guys know about it and if it's better than global entry, let me know. I don't know, I, I have no idea. But global entry and pre TSA pre domestically basically mean the same thing. If you have global entry, it means that you can go into the TSA pre line. When you go up to security and you are flying, there is usually one long line that is sneaking around and there is a very short line that people are just breezing through. That short line is the TSA pre line. What that means is that you've already been vetted, you get to keep your laptops in your bag, you get to keep your toiletries in your bag, you get to keep your shoes on, and you breeze through security. It is an entirely different experience I will never go back to not having it again. TSA Pre is just domestic, so that means that if you fly abroad, you cannot use it when you come back in the country. You can't skip the lines or anything like that. Global entry basically gets you to cut the customs line when you come back into the US when you fly. When we flew back from India, the custom line was three hours long, and if I would have had global entry, I would have breezed through in about five minutes. I will never make that mistake again. So if you want to get TSA Pre, it's it's a very quick process. You just have to fill out some paperwork and I think you get it in like a few weeks. I don't know. If you want a global entry, it is a process. It takes months. It's a pain in the ass. There is a long form you have to fill out. You have to go to an airport for an interview. It is a real thing that you have to do but it's worth it. So that's it, those are my 10 flight tips. If you guys have any questions or concerns, let me know in the comments below. If you have any good tips of your own, please let me know too. Um, I'm sorry it's been so long again. I'm still working on the India videos. I'm actually kind of thinking of maybe doing like life update videos sometimes, like more of like a vlog thing, but I don't know. Would you guys be into that? Um, I feel like sometimes with the format that I have, it's. It's a little limiting because it's either like editing these incredibly complex videos that have like music and interviews and like locations all over the place or it's kind of these tip videos that I have to really, I sit and I think about and it, it takes a long time to actually write and I wanna be like true and accurate and I wanna be very informative so these take a decent amount of time and I, I would like to kind of just sometimes talk to you guys. So I don't know, if you'd be interested in that, let me know and I'll do that. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys so soon.